Before we go into the podcast, I want to just talk about a business that I've set up with my friend George. Uh, it is called the Podcast Introduction Group. So if you want to join and be able to be featured on 24 to 48 pods, podcasts to be able to reach an amazing audience, this is the place you need to go to. Podcast being a guest on podcast is automatically establishing you as an authority and is able to build your personal and professional brand. We handpick of a bank of podcasters that we have to be able to grow your business and brand. We do a hundred percent of everything that needs to be done by my team. You do not need to lift a finger. You are able to expose yourself to new and relevant markets by going on other people's podcasts. You also are able to create brand loyalty. People will love listening to you and coming back to your products or services and it's able to increase your revenue. So if you want to be able to get involved, you can sign up quickly registered with a with an account manager there's an onboarding call where we target the podcasts that you want to be on the type that you want whether it's entrepreneurship business health fitness whatever it is we then match you to those podcasts and you can start your journey we have regular catch-ups with our account managers and google ranks you when people search for you so when people are searching for you you're able to see your podcast at the top of the list. So if you are interested in being a podcast guest on multiple podcasts, we are the place to go. If you go to podcastintroduction.com and go and register your details, we will have an, a, a quick call with you, uh, match your, your podcast that you want to be on, and we can then start this process ASAP. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Back onto the podcast then. Just one last thing before we go into the podcast, I just wanted to talk to you about the fact that I have a YouTube channel that has been going for quite some time and I am recording and releasing all of my interviews with some short videos as well on YouTube. So please do check it out, YouTube on Absolute Business Mindset. You'll see a bunch of interviews there, all the longer format interviews and some short videos as well. So please enjoy that. And here goes with the podcast interview. This is the Absolute Business Mindset podcast, created and hosted by Mark Hayward. This podcast will interview entrepreneurs, business owners, and people in their careers. We will delve into their journey to success, key life milestones, go deep into their area of expertise, get ready to learn from others' successes and failures. Today, we have Sabrina Osso, who is the founder and CEO of Osso Safe. Hello, Sabrina. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much, Mark, for having us. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining me. So we're going to talk through your journey to success. But as always, we start with the question. Podcast is called Absolute Business Mindset. What does business mindset mean to you? Focusing on people and putting together problems or solutions to problems uh, and focusing on, on people, uh, people just focusing on people and, and resolving problems for those people. Um, I would say that would be the best uh, for me anyway, uh, absolute business mindset. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's go into your degree. So you did a computer science degree with Italian and maths. What made you choose those subjects? Well, uh, at the time, uh, my focus was to get out of my house. Uh, And I read that computer science was... um, a great way to get a degree. Well, it would be good for me to get a degree in computer science. So that way I can establish a a job, if you will, uh, and make money uh, because I lived in a very crazy household. Um, It was traumatic. Uh, I lived with violence. My father beat my mother on a regular basis and my mother would abuse me. So, uh, but at that time, my focus was all about have to, what I, what do I have to do? Have to, have to. 
And, uh, and by the time I graduated and I was getting computer science jobs, I couldn't stand it. It was, uh, everything was a have to, everything was forced, you know, so, so yeah, so I, I hope I answered the question. Um, uh, you asked me what made me do that was to get out of the house, really. Okay, and um, and your business is all about safety at work and safety at home, and we will go into that area. But just to sort of touch on on some of those things, so you saw sort of computer science as your your way out of your domestic environment. Right. What, what didn't you what didn't you like about the jobs once you'd started them? Well, no one told me or us, I should say, as students that um it's kinda of, it was it was just like corporate slavery. Uh like every day, mon- Monday through Friday, eight to five. Um and I couldn't believe the bureaucracy. Uh, it was all about, um, pleasing the executives and, or, or, uh, very ranking, you know, not everyone was treated the same, uh, or treated fairly. And I, and no one tells you that, you know, at school as a student, you know, you're just told study, get a degree get good grades, and then get your job and you'll be set. But no one tells you how grinding it is and how political it gets and how. So that's what I couldn't stand. And, and I realized after therapy, being in therapy that I'm a dancer. I'm a dancer. So the corporate world was the opposite of that. So uh, so yeah, so I, I just, I really disliked it. Um, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that I, I know what I know about computers, uh, uh, and also my degree was in programming. And when I got out, I did, I did tech support, which I did not study at all. I, I did a lot of tech support. I was responsible for about 200 users at the time between 150, 250 users. So, and that was what I didn't study. And it was all about people really, you know, um, what, what's wrong with the computer, uh, everything from, well, the color of my mouse pad is not like so-and-so down the hall. Can you please make my mouse pad like so-and-so down the hall to, uh, taking computers out of the box, setting them up, putting them on the network, um, uh, installing all of the software, so on and so forth. So, yeah, it, it, no one tells you that as a student, you know, um, so and I found out the hard way. We'll be back after a quick break. Hi, I'm Alex, the host of X Health Show. Meet the future of healthcare. Think X Men, that's X Health. Actual superheroes behind programming living cells to cure cancer once and for all. Tech that detects preterm delivery in seconds, brain computer interface, or apps that employ AI to match you, your disease, with the best treatment. X Health Show brings to you visionaries who push the boundaries of healthcare from Switzerland, the heart of Europe, and the most innovative innovative country in the world. Let me introduce you to their startups. Head to X Health Show, meet the future of healthcare. Happy to greet you there. And how long did you actually last doing those corporate tech support jobs for? Oh, I did that for about 10 years. Um, yeah, a good 10 years after I graduated and but then I, I completely immersed and submerged myself in the dance world, which is also business. It's a different kind of business, I have to say. You know, it's um, it, it's yeah, it, it's definitely business, just a different realm. Uh, and and I had several jobs, you know, several like all in the computer arena, insurance, 
Uh, I was the tech support person for insurance, uh, a chemical company, a um, uh, also more in health, um, uh, uh, a Japanese American company that did a lot of construction and big projects overseas in Japan. And I was their tech support person. And so I just couldn't do it anymore. That's understandable. So the, a job is not for everyone. I think I think you learn well, that. Right, right. But you know, I I found uh, because I, I was going on these uh, millionaire mind seminars, and uh, you know, for people to improve their life and to find their calling, if you will. And there's a lot of people unhappy at their jobs. Yeah. Many, many. Um, and, and these these millionaire mind seminars are full of people trying to change their lives, you know, so I definitely wasn't alone. And, uh, and, and that to me says that there's just too many unhappy people doing what they hate to do. But it's a paycheck. You know, it's just the paycheck. And they they have to provide for families or they have elderly people to be responsible for. And, and I have to say, I think a lot of it, though, comes from not being in a, in a good home. Because when you live in that type of environment, like where you're always in urgent mode, in survival mode, and in, in, um, if you're seeing dad beat up mom or mom beat up dad, or if you're getting abused or, or it's a combination of everything, how can you focus on what it is that you really want to do with your life? Mm. You can't. It's impossible. You're in a war zone. So I feel like anybody displaced. And I'm not saying everyone, but I would say most of most of those people. Uh, it's because home was not a safe place. Mm. Mm. So they had to do what was forced. And maybe they wanted to be a dancer, an actor, a singer, uh, a performer, an engineer, a doctor, or whatever it is. And they couldn't focus on that because they had to be in survival mode. So, um, so yeah, so j- just as a comment, I, um, yeah, I, I would say um, it, it, it's a shame you know, um, we should be doing what we love to do, or at least like it, (laughs) if not love it, at least like it, you know, otherwise, life is very difficult, for no reason, really. Absolutely. And I I, I agree with you, those sorts of webinars, seminars, where people are saying, follow your dreams, follow your ambitions. and, And a lot of people never do, sadly, because, as you say, there's security in a paycheck, which being an entrepreneur is not as secure and um, although uh, much more rewarding um, not everyone can actually make that step Um, so I would agree with that but let's talk about your professional dancing and and, uh, you as a teacher before we go into also safe we'll we'll talk a lot about your business and what you do there so how did you become a professional dancer teacher yes um It was always in me, always, uh, but I couldn't even think about it growing up. I couldn't, I couldn't think about it. I couldn't even mention it. Um, So I had to kind of stifle myself and and put it on the back burner. But uh, I was going to therapy and my therapist said, Sabrina, you're, you're a dancer. You have to go dance. Uh, And at the time I was heavy duty clubbing. I moved out and I was hitting the New York City scene, which was very heavy clubbing. Um, And I loved it. I felt so free in the clubs. Um, My favorite music is techno and tribal and uh, um, uh, trans. And I I loved it. I loved the whole DJ scene. And and I felt so free. I can't even tell you. I I loved it. And and my my therapist said I I could feel how happy you are dancing. Go, go, go train, go. And um, 
So I did. I I was uh, taking 12 classes a week. I was dancing. I was uh, auditioning heavily. I was um, and and I started late, but I took teachers that really propelled me, you know, and and taking 12 classes a week is serious. It's no joke. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> it's and my body was even transforming. I was always thin, but uh, when you dance and and ballet and jazz and tap and theater and Latin and lyrical and I, I was taking everything, your body really changes and it becomes like a sculpture. Um, and other people saw it too. Uh, and that's what dance does, you know, so, so, and I was heavily auditioning and it was grueling though. I have to say, um, you have to be able to take rejection. And I was all over the tri-state area. Um, I, I live in New Jersey, uh, but I was born in New York city and all of my training is in New York. And, um, but it, it it was great though. I, I got to meet so many great people, uh, Broadway, off Broadway, and 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 you see how. Uh, and I was auditioning for everything, uh, Rockettes, even though I'm not tall, but they have a genre of dancers for the Rockettes where you're the core. And I was auditioning for everything and everything and anything under the sun and. Um, and like I said, I was taking 12 classes a week, uh, um, all in New York. I would shuffle between three studios, uh, Broadway Dance Center, Steps, and Alvin Ailey. And I-, I didn't pigeonhole myself in any one style. You know, I made sure that I was a well-rounded dancer. And uh, and then I started writing my one woman show and and then that touches upon that goes into how I started my business so I'll save that for later but um oh yes and then I was I was teaching I was teaching dance I was um and I did that for 10 years uh teaching dance every all ages from pre-k all the way up to adult high school and and uh college level adult and uh, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. it, it um, uh, I still dance. I still dance and I incorporate that in my business for sure. And we could talk about that later. But uh, um, yeah, I, 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 I am a dancer. So fantastic. Uh, well, um, so one of the things you described yourself, uh, but we'll go into also safe and, and maybe, maybe it's a good segue now to just talk. So what made you start that business? What, what was the inspiration behind starting that business? I started writing my one woman show called home sweet home uh, a number of years ago. And, um, it, it, and it's called home sweet home. Um, and I play different women being abused. She goes to her good place. That's where the dancing comes in, but then she's pulled back into the terror of violence, but the show ends really strong, really empowering. And I did a lot of research for that show because I wanted it to be educational. I wanted it to be empowering and informative And I could not believe, Mark, the statistics that I was finding. Uh, Like, I I knew how much home violence impacted me, but I didn't know how common it was and how how it just affects every facet of someone's life. And I said to myself, wow, I have to make this into a business, into a bona fide business with products and services. So that's what I did. And, And I kept asking myself the question, what did I need growing up? What is it that would have made a difference in my life and make it better in some capacity? So that's what I did. I I, I created products and services that I think are very avant-garde, very progressive and unique. And, And I think that it's the direction of how real estate should go. So, and we could talk about that a little bit later, but um, uh, that's how dance kind of uh, started was the 
catalyst for oh so safe really by this one woman show um yeah i hope i answered the question where, where did you perform your one one woman show uh it was in let's see i started writing it uh it was around 2010 uh no 2008 nine around there so and i performed it um What's great is that uh, my show is uh, it has different styles of dance and I have different monologues and they go into the different styles of dance. So and I performed different aspects of the show because all I had to do, like, let's say for um, a, a certain venue, they needed an African piece. So I had that or another venue needed a musical theater piece. I had, I had that. So I would extract pieces of it to perform for whatever venue, but then I did the show also in its entirety, you know? Um, so at different aspects of, of my life, uh, and it was around 2000, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, 2000, nine 2010 between 2008 and 2010 i would say and um and you started this business um where you say that you want to make people safe at work life and in play um how do you so you do you do online courses do you do product you said you do products and services so so maybe just talk a little bit around what products and services that you actually provide sure our it's a combination of well it's combining education and technology and our core product is the oh so safe home sweet home certifications really uh and this is for properties uh, all properties, but we are focusing on landlords and tenants. Um, so, because that would be the path of least resistance. And we are saying basically, look, Mr. and Miss Landlord, hire us. We will get your property Oso Safe certified. What does that mean? They purchase the Oso Safe Home Sweet Home package, and it consists of a policy, a seminar, an app, and therapists assigned to the property. So we say with the policy, um, I, as a landlord, I promise to provide you a safe space for you to live. You in turn as my tenant, you promise to not act in any way, shape or form abusively. Otherwise you, the abuser only gets immediately evicted from the premises. And we go into full knowledge, knowing that that would be the consequences. So that way there's no surprises um, you are held to a higher regard, a higher standard in an also safe certified property. So that's the policy. The seminar is for new and existing tenants, and everybody gets educated on facts, statistics, warning signs, definitions of abuse, the difference between abuse and discipline, just to name a few items. And we educate both adults and children. So that's the home sweet home seminar. Then the third component is an app, and this app will detect violent-like movements and captures them in real time, issuing alerts. So let's say a landlord has 10 units. They get an alert, let's say, in unit two and in unit 10. Wow, I just saw you beat the crap out of her, or you just beat the crap out of him. This is grounds for eviction. And you know this because you went through the seminar, you you signed the policy. So that's the app and it's being updated right now. Um, and then the fourth and final component are therapists assigned to the property. So this is a requirement. Once a month, you are required to check in with your therapist. And it's just as a preventative measure. Um, is anything looming? Do you feel like anything is really conflicting in your household? Just to give an example, well, yes, um, our son, daughter came home with really bad grades, or they are they were involved in a bullying situation. Um, we know that we're not going to beat our child. We're not going to verbally physically, sexually abuse our child, help us through this, you know, because we are held to a higher regard, a higher standard in an also safe certified property. So this is all on the preventative side. 
And we feel that this is how residency is going to move in this direction, making safety a required standard condition of residency. I hope I make sense. Oh, um, you do, 100%. Uh, uh, then the immediate follow-on question is, what, 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 so you, you, you certify landlords or blocks of apartments, whatever it is, as also safe. How does that work legally? Because like, from a legal point of view, yes, you've got a certified property. And if someone is abusing or, or, or attacking someone, you, you'll have the apt. But, but from a very specific legal point of view, how does, yes. how does, it, how does it work? Well, we always consult with a small team of lawyers on everything that we do. And uh, so everything from the certifications, the package, the policy, um, uh, everything has been proofread, if you will, and made enforceable by the small team of lawyers that we always consult with. So and we were told if you have in the policy a waiver and you have everyone know with full knowledge that this is what this is what you are requiring of residents in order to live in a no so safe certified property yeah. then then and you make everyone aware then it is enforceable uh in in court if you will and also in New Jersey law, uh, New Jersey statutes annotated. Um, this is a, a portion of the of the uh, grounds for eviction, if you will. NJSA two A colon eighteen dash sixty one one, I believe, and it states in there in section two. Uh, I believe it's two D. Um, if a person, after written notice to cease continues to violate or breach any of the rules and regulations of the landlord, provided that they have been accepted by the tenant or by the resident in writing, uh, and that uh, uh, in governing said premises, then, then you have a right to evict that person. So uh, as long as it is in writing or accepted as part of the lease at the beginning of the lease term. So this satisfies the requirement for for residency in and, and this would propagate over all all states, I would say, in, in the United States and as well as abroad. Um, so and we make this a requirement, if you will, in residency. Um, so I hope answered the question as far as legal, as far as the, um, and even the app, it takes away the, he said, she said factor, Mm. because you have, you have proof that you, you physically assaulted someone or sexually assaulted someone. Um, and we do take into account privacy, obviously, but we say that we you should not sacrifice safety for privacy. Um, so I hope I hope I answer the question. You have and, and from a from an app point of view, so so how do you how do you build that technology? You're saying that people, if someone is abusing violently in a in a in in a in a house or in a residence you'd be able to spot it how how do you use the technology to spot if someone is being violent it's a combination of artificial intelligence and facial recognition um i hired a software company to and they they design the app according to my specifications okay. so uh so it basically uses those those two aspects of technology if you will but so facial recognition and ai so 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 is it by motion is it by like if 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 it's in if the phone's in my pocket and it and i'm i don't know punching someone will it be able to spot that i'm being violent to someone or how does how does the app recognize violence 
it matches your facial expressions with uh, motion. So it's not going to pick up uh, like, let's say, a ball rolling down the street or rough house. Like if you're kidding around with someone, your facial expression is one of um, not fear, not panic, not anxiety. Uh, if you're just kidding around with someone, so it's not going to pick up but, those. But, so, sorry to cut across you, but I'm I'm just thinking from a very practical. So, uh, is the app recognizing the aggressor or the the re- or the person who's receiving both? Both and and and, and but if my phone's in because my because it will pick up. Oh, go on, oh, go on, please carry on. It will pick up the the um the violent scene, if you will. Uh, right now we have it where it's uh, 30 seconds to a minute. And we, we realized that violent scenes can go longer, longer than that. But this is where the improvements are being are being done. But it'll pick up the yeah, the violent scenes. So the whole uh, the perpetrator as well as the victim. But if if my phone's in my pocket, it's not going to be able to recognize facial recognition, is it? Whether I'm scared or or on one side or aggressive on the other side. Uh well, I mean, if it's in your pocket, the mm, it, it's like um a whole scene, and this would be in residency. So so it's it's not. It, it, it the app is um it is installed on the on, on a on an iPad on a on a phone on a a tablet but there are it, it does record uh like the common areas in the apartment or in the household so um it's not so much you don't have to wear it on you okay if you will you know like if like to me the example that you're giving is like uh if you're out and about, right? Oh, oh, salute. So, are we saying that there's there's cameras in your home? Is that is that how it's recognized? Right, right, right. right. Yes, yeah, specific cameras in the common area of a re- of the residence of the of the home. Yes, uh, correct. That, but this that. will have multiple applications. I have to say, for example. We will be shopping this around to, let's say, if you have a nanny taking care of a baby and you're at work or an elderly person uh, with a, um, a home health aide or a pet sitter with your pet. So it will have multiple applications. Even as a real estate agent, I'm a real estate agent. Uh, we could apply this also when we show homes and we're alone with potential buyers that have bad intentions uh so so but the focus will be in residency to make safety a required standard condition of residency and to have the technology complement the education and the education complement the technology if you will yeah and and actually it makes a lot more sense if you've got cameras in 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 each room and and the the example that you gave with a nanny and a and a child, if 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 something untoward happened there, it can make a lot of sense and, and equally um a landlord maybe acting inappropriately or even a, a, a another resident acting inappropriately right uh, would, would pick up in that that makes that makes a lot of sense. I think that's a, a in essence you're 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 a- adding an extra layer of security and safety in people's homes right um, that actually cameras can do in in but they don't have the the, the smart app to be able to register and if, if someone was violent in in one of these homes um does it then flick to the police does it does it does it notify the police or does it notify the landlord who, who how does it who does it notify Yes, this is some of the adjustments that we're making uh, where you could set it either way, either both or one or the other. Um, These are some of the improvements that we are making to the app. That's amazing. So I'm sorry to keep on going because I'm a bit of a tech 
I, I enjoy text. Oh, uh, yes. So this is why the, <laughs> okay. the, the, the so term, I'm just trying to understand it from a from a very uh, from from a, from a, a, a high level point of view. Okay, let's move on. Um, so you did a TEDx uh, talk. What what was what, what did you speak about on TEDx? Yes, I um, I basically laid out the skeleton for my vision for residency and to to diminish and prevent violence in, in your home, at school, at work. Uh, and, and, you know, in these TEDx talks or TED talks, you cannot sell, right? They're, that they make that very clear. You cannot sell anything. You cannot promote anything of your products or services. So, uh, so I, I said to myself, well, how can I educate and and lay out the foundation for what it is, the idea that I have, the vision for oh so safe without saying these are my products and services. So that's what I spoke about in the 14 minutes of my TEDx talk, the vision that I have for for um for all of us really. Uh, like I mentioned, I, I grew up with violence and life is hard enough as it is. No one should live with abuse, with violence, with chaos, with dysfunction. I don't care who you are. It should not be a part of anyone's existence, period, over and out. Um, to even, uh, uh, I remember one podcaster, he said to me, wow, Sabrina, I don't even know what that looks like. Uh, for, fortunately, I lived in a great home. I I did experience some bullying at school because of my nationality, but I can't even picture my dad attacking my mom or my mom attacking my dad or us because he had several siblings. And I thought to myself, um, yeah, that should be the norm. That that needs to be the norm, not not um, verbal, physical, sexual abuse, living in fear in your home, or and, and whatever it is, whether it be a, a townhouse, a co-op, a condo, a single-family home, a multi-family dwelling, a two-family home, a villa, a mansion, a mobile home. I think I covered all types of residency, and I say it in that order in my TEDx talk, so that way I cover. I'm, I wanted to be very inclusive to make sure that I, I included everyone, no matter where you live. That's how it should be. So in the TEDx talk, I, I, I felt very responsible to be inclusive and to lay out the foundation of the vision that we have at Oso Safe regarding residency and safety in that re- residency beyond you know, the heat, the hot water, the electricity, electricity, central air, all of that is secondary to safety, you know. Um, I, I, I can I can empathize with with that, that other podcaster because I came from a relatively stable, happy uh, background. But I'm I am conscious of people that have suffered um, abuse uh, from all all. all types of 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 backgrounds and um i would say what you're doing is incredible incredible because as you say thank you especially children but not just children can be women can be men people who are suffering from abuse mental or physical abuse or sexual abuse is just not acceptable and there is no reason for that to be ever deemed accept- acceptable so I think what you're doing is a wonderful thing. I think it hundred percent should be supported. We should all get behind you to make that safe. It's it, for example, I mean, I'm in real estate as well. I'm in property as well, and I'm I'm having conversation with someone at the moment about um, one of my houses being looked after for distressed families. So people, if they were being abused by, let's say, as an example, the father or the husband is is abusing the wife and the children, to be able to have that capability for someone to use your home for a short time before they find their 
long term home using that and that's something that i'm considering at the moment because as you say these people are going through awful experiences and are not being supported enough by by governments by regulators by um by the state governments and not doing enough to support those people so um i'm uh, i 100 I... support you on this Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have to say uh, the legal aspect, like the courts, when I say legal, the courts, the judges, the in the U.S. Um, and and I, I live in New Jersey, uh, but uh, I could say across the board, they make horrible matters even worse, especially for children, abused children. Um, and I have personal and professional experience with this when I say even the child protective service agencies, I hate to say this, but it's the truth. They should rename themselves the child endangerment agencies. Um, I, I came across a very disturbing statistic and I didn't realize it till recently, but five children are murdered every day in the U.S., at the hands of an abusive parent under the watch of a so-called child protective service agency, a lawyer, a mediator, a judge, uh, a, a parent coordinator, absolutely inexcusable, unacceptable in the States. And these are just the ones that are documented five a day yeah. with also safe certifications, the also safe home sweet home package and we intend to have this really build momentum and to really take off on a national, uh, local, national and global level. You won't need the courts. What do you need the courts for? Um, you, you resolve it right in residency. And as landlords, and I'm a landlord, um, I'm, I'm not a landlord here. I'm, I'm a landlord abroad. And I intend to bring this abroad. Uh, right now, the way the laws are, it's the your you have ten units. Well, you're stuck. You get stuck with the abusive family or the abuser and and the rest of the family. And then all of your uh, non-violent tenants leave, right? Because it affects everybody else, right? You hear yelling and screaming. The kids are 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 crying. Maybe things are being broken. You you hear constant uh, conflict. So you leave, right? As the in unit two A or in unit three B or um, and we're saying why flip all of that you should leave the abuser. So that way we maintain property reputation. You mitigate liability. Yep. Your tenants feel safe. You decrease vacancy rates. Um, it's a win-win. And it's you, the abuser, that has to leave, not, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So this is what we are, how we're marketing this these products to say, Mr. and Ms. Landlord, this is a better way. And this should be the future of residency. And when I say future, I mean the immediate future, not years and years, because it's um, if anything that COVID has done on a good, on a positive is to to really shed light on the need for mental health, yes. for safety in residency, for um, that you should feel like your home is your sanctuary and not a war zone yeah. and, and to make mental health a regular part of one's existence. Um, so that's a positive that COVID did on, on a global level, I feel. So, so thank you for your positive feedback. I, I, I greatly appreciate that. A hundred percent. And and I hope I, I portrayed that in the interview. I'm just, I'm just interested because it's, it's a very niche uh, type of business. And, and, and I, I just really want my audience to sort of understand where you're coming from as well as what you do. So um, thank you for sharing that with, uh, with us and with me. So what, what's the sort of plan for the next two to five years? Where, where do you see also safe going international? Absolutely. Absolutely. International. I see 
there are three levels to the OSO safe certification and and once we do the education uh then our logo uh, as you can see behind me <laughs> um that will be put outside of the property so we foresee that people recognize that logo and say, wow, I would rather live in an also safe certified property versus one that isn't because they have mechanisms and systems in place that if and when violence happens, uh, we are safe, that we, that we are held to a higher regard, a higher standard, as I mentioned earlier. And, 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 there is no violence, abuse, chaos, dysfunction that happens. And if it does, it's on a on a um, on a preventative diminishing side. Uh, so yes, we see this um, across the globe, really. And also, we are talking to real estate professionals. I'm an agent, and like I said, I'm a landlord. So we are speaking to people uh, to the National Association of Realtors, the New Jersey Association of Realtors to get real estate agents on board where they're also safe certified because we come across I'm sure you know you're you're a uh, a real estate investor mark so we come across some um, buyers and sellers and and landlords and tenants all day long mm-hmm. um and agents can be instrumental in this whole equation mm-hmm. uh and we feel that when you sign your lease and you sign title to your property that you become also safe certified. Um, Like I said, this is all on the preventative side and this benefits everyone, everyone in each residence, as well as the neighbors, you know, all all around. Um, uh, I mean, the statistics are very alarming uh, and we feel that like when, when people say a niche, I don't know. I I feel like this is very common, unfortunately. Uh, So it's a um, yes, it is a specific market, but but everyone's in real estate, right? Everyone's in real estate. Everyone is at a school at some point in their life and then they go to work. So it's very um, applicable on multiple levels, for sure. I I, I I 100% agree and I, I I hope I didn't offend you by calling it niche. It's oh no 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 you didn't uh, you didn't offend me. No 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 not at all. I I just like to uh point out certain things and and um uh and and to just let people know that it's definitely applicable uh, on multiple levels. And I would I would encourage anyone who's listening that that is a landlord and 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 has tenants that that they consider also safe because it, it gives the extra layer of support and sort of uh, peace of mind that that right. what you're doing uh, that 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 people are protected and are are kept safe because sadly you're right that it is a lot more common than some people would even like to to, to even think about so um hundred percent hundred percent support what you're doing there thank you thank you. Um, look, we're coming to the end of the interview. I ask the same six questions to all of my guests. They're quick fire questions. They don't need a quick fire answer. They've been described a little bit as, as being thought provoking. This is all unprepared. Uh, so um, so please do answer. Uh, first question is, what's the best decision that you made? Becoming a dancer. Uh, I feel that that has given me a lot of um, a lot of strength uh, on multiple levels. So, um, in in taking rejection, in um, and just being on right as a performer, you have to be on and really um, and, and really be in the moment. And uh, so. I, I I think, you know, growing up the way I did, I, I could have gone the route of, oh, why pursue it? Uh, um, uh, I didn't start when I was five years old, three years old. Why even bother? I'm glad I I took the bull by the horn, so to speak. And I I gave him my all. Um, 
yeah so awesome. that awesome <laughs> what's the best piece of advice you've been given uh I had a ballet teacher uh, once say, take what you need and discard the rest. And she said that after giving me, uh, she was talking to me, advising me, and and I never heard anyone say that to me. So it just made me think not everyone is going to have the answers. So take what you need. And then do away with what you don't need. Um, so, yeah. So, so she, and she said that to me, um, she's a wonderful human being. And, uh, and, and I, I, I remember that um, quite a bit, you know, and, and to just, I say that I say this because like you look for answers and you want someone to reach out to someone to say, Oh, um, and hold them to their every word, not everyone is going to have the answers 100%. So take what you need and discard the rest. Brilliant. Thank you. Who helped you most in your career? Um, my, my longtime boyfriend. He's been with me through thick and thin, thin and thick. Um, he has supported me through everything, through so much. And uh, he's the opposite of my father. And, and considering where I came from, my therapist even said, um, it's amazing that you have someone like that because usually you repeat the pattern. And I didn't. Um, I mean, when I was dating, you know, uh, and you meet people and uh but uh, uh, he's been my rock. Amazing. Amazing. Um, do you have any regrets? Yes, 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 definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I never understood people who say that they don't because there are, there are things that you only get one shot in life. And if you make mistakes on that, then you're... That's it. So I definitely have them. Uh, did you want me to say one yeah. of them? Um, um, it's up to you. If you want to share one of them with me, you can. If you don't want to, it's equally fine. Yeah, I uh, I mean, one is um, uh, I, I never had children. And I'm hoping that I still can. Um, and it all had to do with my upbringing. I was very much against it. And because of how I grew up. And so, and I regret not having them. I'm, I'm hoping that I still can, but, uh, and I, and I wish I, I did earlier. So that is one. Yeah. One regret for sure. Mm, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for your honesty. I really appreciate that. Some people don't want to share their regrets. So I really appreciate you being so honest and frank with me. Um, thank you. What, what are you most proud of? Oh, so safe. Oh, so safe and, and my dancing. And I incorporate my dancing in oh, so safe, um, especially when I, I go to schools and universities uh, and that's been kind of frozen because of covid mm -hmm. but uh i incorporate the dancing to convey the message to students of all ages um but I i'm proud of oh so safe i'm i'm proud of of the concept and what we've done so far and and getting it out there and that such a company and and the products and services exist because I I feel that it's very it's fundamental it's it's much needed. Absolutely, hundred percent agree. And lastly, what does legacy mean to you? Uh, create. 
creating a lot of good and having others continue that good. Really nice. Thank you. And lastly, if people want to reach out to you, where can people find you? Uh, Our website, ohsosafe.com. We're on all the social media platforms, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram. And my direct email is sabrina at ohsosafe.com. That would be the best way. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for your time today. It's been fascinating and I 100% support um, an important area of business. So um, well done and just keep going. You're doing something really valuable and meaningful. Thank you so much, uh, Mark. Thank you for allowing me to be on this platform, uh, on your on your podcast, Absolute uh, Business Mindset. Um, we really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thanks a lot.